Out my op-ed today over at HartmanReport.com is titled, Revenge is not the fascists' final last gasp option. It's their first. And I point out, you know, that this is, you know, when you don't have anything to govern, when your entire agenda is giving tax breaks to billionaires and pouring more poison into the air, water, and food supply of the country so that your, your big donors will make more profits and, and take you on more trips on luxury yachts and pour money into your campaigns, then, you know, what do you have left? Well, it looks like revenge. Republicans in the Tennessee House of Representatives are furious and out for revenge. They, 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 they banned two black members yesterday and, and narrowly allowed a Democratic woman to remain in office uh, when she was asked why they thought, why, why she thought that, they, uh, that the Republicans banned the two black, young black men, but not her. She said, well, it might have something to do with the color of my skin. You think? But, you know, this pathetic kangaroo court, you know, that the world was watching was just for one thing, revenge. They, they, these people embarrass these Republicans by pointing out that as children are being slaughtered in Tennessee by guns, these Republicans refuse to do anything about it. In fact, yesterday they actually uh, passed a piece of legislation out of the House that would have given, given teachers the right to carry a gun into school. Yeah, all we need, more guns in schools. Jim Jordan and his buddies in the Republican Party are furious and out for revenge. Donald Trump is being held to account, oh my God, by a black district attorney. So Jordan is trying to intimidate that office. Ron DeSantis is furious and out for revenge. He, yeah, after the CEO of Disney publicly called him out for his don't say gay law, uh, DeSantis tried to screw J Disney, uh, you know, with that special tax district. It turns out that Disney outfoxed him, and now he's seriously pissed off, and he's, he's trying to launch an investigation of Disney. All right, good luck with that. Excuse me, Brett Beerbong Kavanaugh is furious and out for revenge. Remember during, pardon me, I have the hiccups here. <laughs> Remember during his, his uh, confirmation hearings, he said, and I quote, this whole two-week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit. Revenge on behalf of the Clintons and millions of dollars in money from outside left-wing opposition groups. This is a circus. The consequences will extend long past my nomination. The consequences will be with us for decades. And as we all know, in the political system of the early 2000s, what goes around comes around. Right. Donald, well, he got his revenge with the Dobbs decision. He was the deciding vote. Donald Trump is furious and out for revenge. For the first time in his 76 years on this earth, he's being held to account for a small slice of his lifetime of criminal behavior and, uh, and being held to account by a black man at that. By the way, I, uh, Kavanaugh may not have been the deciding vote. I think it was a six to three vote, as I recall. I'd have to go back and look. In any case, one of the deciding votes. Donald Trump is apparently trying as hard as he can to trigger another one of his stochastic terrorist followers to threaten or assassinate the district attorney, the judge, or even their families. The Republican Party has devolved into an organized mob bent on revenge because the people of America are rejecting their version of leadership and uh, their abandonment of democracy. And facing increasing rejection by the voters, they've turned to gerrymandering, threats, blocking the right to vote, and inciting violence. Basically, all they have is revenge. And revenge is violence. Revenge is a political philosophy rooted in violence. The domination of the many by the few, whether it's personal physical violence, the violence of great wealth and political power being used to destroy your enemies, or unjustified violence inflicted by the state under the color of law, like, you know, white cops killing unarmed black men. But at its core, revenge is rooted in physical violence, intimidation, and even murder. It's war brought into politics and governance. And vengeance has its own attraction. It's dramatic, so the media loves it. Tell, you know, if you've got politicians who are, who are swearing revenge, the media will be there every single time. And make no mistake, the Republican Party has become the party of revenge and political violence. Democrats are watching revenge against and violence against school board members, against nurses and doctors treating COVID, against abortion providers, against racial minorities and queer people. 
It's, it's the exception, says the media. Oh yeah, that violence, it's just, you know, let's just move along. But in fact, it's not the exception. Revenge-based violence and the willingness to use it are now Republican declarations. They are statements of purpose. They are spoken and executed with pride. They are assertions by Republicans that their followers are perfectly willing to exercise violence and its power up to and including the ultimate power, the power to kill people, like the three police officers they killed on January 6th and the 140 others that they tried to kill. Republicans and their media lionize Kyle Rittenhouse for killing, you know, two people uh, in, what was it, Philadelphia, uh, Milwaukee, as I recall. They celebrate police revenge against black people with thin blue line flags or all black American flags, which proclaim, I'm willing to kill. They show up at protests heavily armed with t-shirts saying free helicopter rides for liberals, right? Trump says there's very good people on both sides. After his followers, who said that they were demanding revenge for Jews trying to replace them with black people, murdered a young woman named Heather Heyer. Republican ads for office feature guns and imply threats to kill people for political revenge. These are all expressions of a political philosophy that is based in revenge. You know, when Rusty Bowers, Adam Kinzinger, Brad Raffsenperger, all Republicans dared stop Trump's criminal attempt to steal the 2020 election, they were, they were threatened. Rusty Bowers endured violent threats outside his home night after night as his daughter lay dying. This kind of revenge-driven violence is devoid of compassion. It's evil. And there's not one word from Roma, Rona Ronnie, Romney McDaniel about the embrace of revenge by the Republican base. Not one word from congressional Republicans about the violence threatened against Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. Not a word from Republican media other than to cynically mouth phony excuses and justifications for revenge. Because revenge is now their brand. They revel in it. Revenge is the cardinal characteristic, the logo, the brand identity of fascism. Every fascist movement in history has lifted itself into power on the scaffold of revenge. Hitler claimed it was the Jews who stabbed Germany in the back in World War I with the Treaty of Versailles. Trump claimed that it was brown people from Mexico who were to account for the, who were responsible for the destruction of the American middle class under 40 years of Reaganomics. It's all about revenge. Rush Limbaugh used to claim that it was women coming into the workplace that were the reason why wages weren't going up. It's all about revenge. This is how they cow dissent. It's their most powerful recruiting tool. It's a weapon that provokes action and fascists love action. It creates chaos and revenge needs chaos to tear down existing structures. It's what motivated Tim McVeigh. He wanted revenge for Waco when he blew up the federal building. It, it motivated the Las Vegas shooter who killed 58 people and wounded another 550. It motivated the Boston bomber, the Buffalo killer of 20 people in the supermarket, revenge against black people, the El Paso shooter who, shot, who murdered 23 people, revenge against Hispanics, revenge against Jews and rage, the tree of life shooter. He left a whole manifesto claiming, you know, that it was all about revenge. The two biggest books in the Republican movement, Camp of the Saints and Turner Diaries, are about the revenge of white people against the so-called mud races. Now, most Americans are not driven by revenge. It's not how they think politics should work. Most Americans would rather have a country that works for all of us. But re Republicans in Tennessee, preening for the cameras and high on their own white privilege self-righteousness, got their revenge yesterday. They bullied and humiliated their Democratic colleagues who were acting on behalf of that state's school children and expelled two uppity black members. Hopefully, now, America is starting to wake up to the fact that this is all the GOP has to offer is revenge.